uh, a break or we can we move, press on? Let's keep going. Okay. So we will move on to the consent agenda. Um, what? Okay, uh, consent agenda. Um, citizens' comments on consent agenda items uh, includes the approval of minutes, the local option sales tax committee, the monthly litigation report. Uh, we have uh, two police department items and two utility items. Uh, any citizens' comments on these agenda items? Okay, um, seeing none. Uh, City Council members, anyone want to pull any item on the agenda? Then I'll entertain a motion. Motion to approve the consent agenda. Second. There's been a motion and a second to approve the consent agenda. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Now we will move to regular agenda items. We have um, an historical site marker item was we we're going to entertain uh, citizens' comments on regular agenda items only. Uh, we, uh, sure, um, make sure I get them all. Uh, we have the first historical um, marker, uh, home site marker. We have uh, the the utilities capital improvement pro capital improvements program and the operations fund budget status update, an award of an agreement for the construction of the Alligator Creek Pedestrian Bridge to purchase chairs for the dais. Um, get rid of our shabby chic look. I would have known that. I would have run again. <laughs> um, and a historic district initiative engineering infrastructure analysis update. That's a mouthful. So anyone having any comments on this, um, please come to the podium. You have three minutes. Okay, seeing none, Lynn, let's move right into the first home site historic marker. Good afternoon, for the record, Joan LeBeau, Urban Design. Um, before you today is the first home site historical marker replacement. Back in um, 2008, the city and the county joined together and they put historical um, signs throughout the city and the county. During the um, construction of Gilcrest Park 1, it was removed. We do not know what happened to it. We have contact with the county. The um, city has looked on all of their properties and the um, contractor was called and asked if they had removed it and where it might be. It has not been located. Uh, we asked to um, have it replaced to recognize that piece of history of our past. Any d questions for Joan or discussion? Uh, one quick question, Joan, regarding the um, the seal mm -hmm. that was re referred to in an email we got, um, are we talking about the hibiscus seal yes. or the city seal? Well, um, it was recommended the hibiscus seal is the current one now. That That is how it will, it could be replaced. Um, the county recommends that we replace it with the city seal so that in the future it would not have to be changed again. I would agree with yeah, that. Yeah, I agree with yeah. that. Okay, so does somebody want to? A motion for Motion for approval with the yes, with the city seal, city with seal. the city seal and appropriation of funds and, appro and appropriate the funds. and appropriate the funds. Second. Second. Okay, so there's been a motion in two seconds <laughs> to approve uh, the home site historical marker with and appropriate the funds and put the city seal on it. So all in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed. Motion carries unanimously. Thank you. Okay. Police capital improvement program and more. Good morning, Kristen Simeon with um, the finance department. Um, we have to, for you today an update on our utilities fund construction and OMR funds, the operating funds for utilities. We did bring this um, PowerPoint and to our utility advisory board and they did recommend approval, but we'll go through um, the slides. So we have our utilities construction fund and you can see there um, it's balanced with revenues or reserves for all the, the current construction projects that are in the five year plan. And we'll go over some of the updated things that weren't in the plan prior year, but are in this year's. 
Um, there are some years where we're using um, wastewater impact fees, reimbursing on certain projects. So we had the wastewater treatment plant expansion um, and then also for the uh, loop project using wastewater impacts. And water impacts are used for a Taylor Road upgrade. Now going into the actual projects, as you know, each year we budget 1.12 for re uh, renewal and replacement projects. In the first two years, fiscal year 20 and 21, we are recommending only doing the 920, and that is because we're going to use the water main renewal and replacement towards two projects, um, the Taylor Road and the Solana water main projects. Um, in fiscal year 2020, we would not need an actual transfer for these um, funds because we have enough in reserves from prior year projects that came in under budget. In the wastewater projects, the um, particular projects that I just want to talk about um, is the wa wastewater treatment plant improvements. In prior years, we had showed 100,000 in um, the through fiscal year 21 and then a million in 22 and 23. Because the project is moving forward and needs some additional um, engineering, um, it has been restructured right now to show that in fiscal year 2020, they need approximately 1.1 million. And then in the out years, we've done 500,000 each year. Those numbers may change as the outcome of the engineering comes through and they decide on a particular path to go of what to do for the actual expansion because there's going to be several alternatives to be considered. The other new project that is on there um, from a prior year that wasn't in the prior year plan is the wastewater Henry Street 20 inch force main replacement crossing at the I 75 um, area. In fiscal year 20, 250,000 is requested for the engineering and $2 million for construction in fiscal year 21. On the water side, um, again, we have our RO plant. We just kept it on there because it's still a continuing project that will um, cross over into fiscal year 20, but it is fully funded from previous. We have our, um, the two new projects, or there's actually three new projects that are on there, but the two that are most current are the Taylor Road water main upgrade from a 10 inch to a 12 inch line. And again, in fiscal year 20, 250,000 for the engineering and design, and then fiscal year 21, 3 million for construction. And for the Solana water main replacement upgrade is um, the same type of, um, same type of funding, the same, um, fiscal year 20, 250,000 in fiscal year 20, and 3 million in fiscal year 21. And then in the out years, fiscal year 24, one big project that is added on into that um, five year plan was the Burnt Store Road Booster Station. We provided all the detail sheets provided the, by the department. Um, if you have any questions, we do have utilities director here to answer any. Going into the operations side, um, so we have our total revenues and we'll go into all our assumptions as we built this plan um, in the next few slides. But as you can see that um, you see our transfer to utilities construction based on that five year plan we just went over. You have existing debt service for the um, old SRF loan and then new debt service on the RO project SRF loan. We've got a transfer to the SRF fund reserve that's required as keeping one year minimum for our um, SRF loan. In fiscal year 21, you see the negative 375. That is for dropping off the old loan. So that money can come back to the OMNR fund. Had the contribution to the pipeline project of 1.5 million in fiscal year 20. That is related to um, the project that is with the um, Peace River Authority. Peace River Authority. And we've already done 500,000. And when our RO project is complete, we would be required to make the additional payment. Um, it may come in a little less if their project comes in less. Any questions on this? Again, our revenue assumptions um, are pretty standard. We estimate a 0.5% growth. No rate increase in this pro forma currently. 
It does assume swift mud funding of grant revenue for the <coughs> RO project, and that's a full 50%. Anything not received by the, from swift mud grant would be we would use from the SRF loan. In fiscal year 19 and 21, we did talk about the wastewater impact fee transfers for the amount that was um, fronted from utilities OM&R for the Jones Loop Force main project. And then in 20 to 23, we have the water impact fees coming into this fund to help with the debt service on the RO plant. On the expense assumption side, personnel is 4% um, merit increase. The defined pension um, plan is flat. And then on the defined contribution pension, it's a 7.5% of pensionable wages. Health insurance is 12% increase in fiscal year 20 and then 6% through the rest of the years. And workers comp at 10%. The operating for fiscal year 20 was based on departmental requests. Um, we did increase the computer overhead as was approved at the previous council meeting um, when we talked about it in April. And um, general liability insurance is 5%. Fiscal year 21 through 24, operating expenditures are estimated at 3% and general liability at 5%. Our capital outlay for fiscal year 20 was based on departmental requests. And in fiscal year 21 through 24, they're estimating approximately 700,000 per year. We continue to use current revenue and operating reserves to fund the five-year CIP. Um, we do have a 1.5 million contribution for the pipeline project, as I mentioned earlier. Um, the debt service is to begin um, in fiscal year 2020. Um, we did a half year in that particular year, and then the out years were full year payments. Um, we increased the, um, we did talk about increasing the state revolving loan reserve in fiscal year 20 as the loan draws occur. We're maintaining the 3 point million operating reserve um, throughout this five year pro forma. And we also have the 1.5 million R&R capital reserve, which was previously um, established for bonded debt covenant, but we have kept it available for emergencies or line breaks as needed. Yes, that's a. As I stated. Oh, oh. That one, okay, sorry. As I stated in the one-on-ones, mm -hmm. um, the $3.9 million additional grant from Swift Mud. Uh, we're not gonna get $3.9 million in grant money, but we are, uh, hopefully, we will get uh, a good a good chunk of that uh, based on uh, what the Swift Mud Board does in June, mm -hmm. late June, so uh, we'll have more to talk to you about that. But it's not going to affect the pro forma. And you don't need the council members to go with you? No. Um, as we have done in the past? Uh, <laughs> and made appearances at the Swift Mud Board meetings. <laughs> yeah, un unfortunately, they do want staff there, and we tried to get out of it because we don't do well when we go. No. But the staff from Swift Mud is recommending some more grant money for us, so uh, it's not going to be three point nine million, nor should it be. Mm -hmm. But it will be a portion of that. Okay. You know, it's in good hands. Thank you. Our lobbyist is on it. Yes. Yes, and uh, hopefully the city manager and I will blend into the background and <laughs> walk away successfully. Good. Unscathed. <laughs> um, so again, some things that are not in the pro forma or considerations to keep in mind as we move forward is that um, we do budget very conservatively. Um, there is a volatility in water and wastewater re revenues based on rainfall, drought conditions, watering mm -hmm. restrictions, <clears throat> economic um, conditions. We are currently having our septic to sewer master plan, um, the financial plan for the first three phases. Um, we'll be bringing that back to you um, in July. It's gonna go to the UAB in uh, June. And then we have our wastewater treatment plant expansion. And again, so those are some unknowns of how we're gonna fund these items, um, what we're gonna you know, be able to present to you. Okay. Any questions? <coughs> I, th <coughs> I think the septic to sewer it goes to UAB in June. Oh, we're we doing it in August. August. Sorry, I apologize. August. We'll be we ready. won't be ready by July. Yeah. Okay. Sorry about that. Any questions? Mm -mm. No, it's very clear, and I'm looking forward to the um, septic to sewer master plan in August. It's coming. 
Yes. Yep. Absolutely. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. You bet. All right. We can go. If there are no questions, then we can go to the next item on the agenda, which is the award of agreement to Quality Enterprises, Inc. for the Alligator Creek Pedestrian Bridge. Good afternoon, Ann Heinen, Procurement for the Record. Um, as you stated, this is an agreement award to Quality Enter Enterprises USA, Inc. of Naples, Florida for the construction of the Alligator Creek Pedestrian Bridge. Uh, this project is partially funded uh, through the Sun Trail Agreement through FDOT. Um, procurement issued an invitation to bid for the construction of the pedestrian bridge. And as part of the Sun Trail Agreement, um, a, require, a requirement for the awarded contractor would be to be, uh, be FDOT pre-qualified in the classification of intermediate bridge. Um, we have confirmed that Quality Enterprises is uh, an FD, FDOT uh, pre-qualified contractor in that discipline. Uh, the total lump sum cost for the project would be 797-905-70. Staff is also requesting council to approve a contingency budget of $10,000 for um, to be used for the department with approved change orders or unforeseen construction conflicts and in, in the plans. Um, project timeline will be 180 consecutive calendar days after the issuance of the notice to proceed. FDOT does concern, uh, concur with staff's recommendation. Staff is recommending award of this agreement to Quality Enterprises USA, Inc. of Naples, Florida as being the lowest responsive, responsible bidder. Other questions? Yeah, Gary? I was a little disappointed that there was no provision for a toll. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's got to be at the bridge. <laughs> <laughs> well, I thought this would be our, our, our test, you know. Yes. Uh, I, do, I do have a resident that was willing to be the troll for the toll bridge. <laughs> Um, I have had questions from uh, residents on why only on this bridge and not the one that's south. And so just for the record, uh, to explain we, that it's because this is part of the Sun Trail system. And the Sun Trail system comes south and then it goes over the Alligator Creek um, Bridge, the North Fork of Alligator Creek, and it then goes to Burnt Star Road and down Burnt Star Road to Cape Coral. And so that's why it, it's being paid for largely by the Sun Trail system, which is part of FDOT, and only includes that one bridge. Um, we have not allocated funds to replace, to do anything for the other The other one is bridge. in the, C, uh, for the record, Joan LeBeau, Urban Design Manager. The other project is in the CIP program and will be looked at later on. Good, good. So thank you. Um, comments, questions? I recommend approval. I, I, I make a motion to approve the award to uh, Quality Enterprises USA. Second. There's been a motion and a second to award the agreement to Quality Enterprises USA. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Thank you. Yes, our residents will be very happy. All those bicyclists and pedestrians. Mm -hmm. Much safer now, not having to go up. Once it's, does that mean in six months then we'll have it? <laughs> maybe. By the end of the year? Maybe. That would be awesome. Okay. Maybe. Okay, now the next item is the purchase for the chairs for the dais. And I know Karen brought this up. I kind of like the shabby chic look. <laughs> shabby. <laughs> well, you know, you can tell that some chairs, people sit here and they must bang their heads <laughs> on the chairs because they're and falling. And that's why we got the covers for the arms because people are constantly banging yes. them into the dais. Yes, the so arms have been covered. The, but like, we can't get covers for the whole back no, of the chair, and they're, so. they're disintegrating and falling apart. They are. They the are rich Corinthian leather is just not holding up. <laughs> so yeah, it, we've been, we've, staff's been researching the available chairs, the materials they're made of, and so we're estimating that if we get some good quality chairs, probably leather, real leather, mm -hmm. uh, something durable, comfortable, adjustable, those things that will probably expend up to $4,500 for all seven chairs. And we will try to reuse those chairs that are still in good condition. Perhaps another department would like to have them, or we can put them up for auction with some of their mm -hmm. items. So 
we'll try to reuse the ones that are still good. Mm -hmm. okay. And we're asking for appropriation of, not really appropriation, but we're asking to transfer some funds from council contingency to cover that expense. I move approval of the funds. Second. There's been a motion and a second to approve the uh, transfer of the funds from council contingency to purchase the chairs. All, uh, all in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? The motion carries unanimously. I have a question. Yes. Will we have these chairs before I'm leaving? <laughs> <laughs> no, let's wait till November. <laughs> I, I, I will say that I know that um, if the chairs are a little more expensive, we may not need to, some of us may not need to sit on pillows. That was my point. I, I want that experience. I know, because I, I, I had to purchase um, a new office chairs for my home, and we spent a little more money, and I was always sitting on a pillow to make sure that I, it was ergonomic, and I don't need to now. So I think that it's going to help all of our boards and committees that use these chairs. They do get a lot of use. Yes. We have many meetings in here every month. So, yes. Yes. We'll do our best to get a, a nice, comfortable, long-lasting chair. Great. And yes, Council Member Wine will probably have to <laughs> before November. Okay. Um, so unfinished business, the Historic District Initiative Engineering Infrastructure Analysis Update. Good afternoon. Afternoon again, for the record, Joan LeBeau, Urban Design Manager. At the last meet City Council meeting, representatives from the Infrastructure Sur uh, Solution Services presented their final analysis report to the Council, and they discussed um, possible solutions uh, for the area. City Council requested that staff bring back some of the ideas for the improvement strategies for Milas and Ida Avenue. Um, and that seemed to be the area of concern at that meeting. Mm -hmm. City staff has a identified the following actions. We are currently, or Public Works is currently um, requesting from FPL the installation of three new street lights on existing poles. There will be no capital charge for the new lights. However, there will be a slight increase in the uh, monthly payment of $10 per month per light. They are also requesting FPL replace all of the lenses and the fixtures on the existing lights um, that are currently there. As the current fixtures have um, sort of gla glazed over so the light is not good, um, that will be replaced at no charge. Uh, there is scheduled tree trimming to occur within the next couple of weeks. Uh, once um, That should be an estimated cost of about $6,000. And then all of the decorative street light bulbs in the surrounding area have been replaced and, sh and should be working. After these improvements are completed, all the additional three, the staff will reevaluate the conditions that are outlined in the report and bring back to council any additional improvements for allocation funding. Are there questions? Mm -hmm. No. It sounds good. Thank you very much for taking these steps before we try to spend more money. Thank you. You bet. Okay. Um, now we go to recommendations from city officers, city manager. Next council meeting, we will have the canal maintenance fund, <coughs> BGI and BSI overviews that will complete all of our fund reviews on July 3rd. Um, July 3rd is going to be a long meeting. So, uh, for so bring a your lunch? We, we may have to, we'll see. It's, <laughs> it's going to be a long meeting. We have on the July 3rd meeting, we will uh, review the general fund once again, get you prepared to uh, discuss a not to exceed millage rate for advertising purposes. When I say not to exceed, you can always go lower later on. Uh, this is a traditional July 3rd meeting because we'll have on July 1 a uh, final taxable value for budgeting purposes from the property appraiser. So that will be on the agenda. In addition, on July 3rd, we will have some public hearings regarding Buckley's Pass related to condominiums. Uh, we are making some adjustments to some of the condominiums based on credible evidence that we have received. So in order to uh, change some of the assessments, we gotta go through the public hearing process. I think there's about four condominium complexes that we'll be hearing from. And they may not come to the meeting, but mm -hmm. we have to have, we have to go through the process. Mm -hmm. And you will also be 
doing, um, sending uh, tentative uh, assessments for the canal maintenance, PGI and VSI, and lot mowing at the July 3rd meeting as well. Also on July 3rd, um, it will be standing room only because you will be hearing from the Pickleball Committee their facts of findings. As I said um, to Howard this week, I didn't know that you had an objective that was packing people into the city council meetings <laughs> on, on the, the number of people that you get to come to council meetings each week. And you're doing a great job. <laughs> <laughs> if you book it, they will come. <laughs> Yeah, I don't, I don't know if everybody thinks I'm doing a great job of doing <laughs> that, but it's going to happen. So all of that will occur on July 3rd. On July 10th, uh, before you go on recess, you will set the tentative millage rate. The reason we're going to do the pickleball committee report on July 3rd, we were going to schedule it for July 10th, but then since they will be ready, they've assured us their report will be ready. On July 3rd, you can hear the report. And then if you choose to do so, you don't have to, on July 10th, you can then decide on whatever action you may want to take for staff to do while you're on recess. Okay. That's the rationale. Okay. That's all I got. Excellent. Thank you. City Attorney. Uh, briefly, you will recall that um, some time ago, I brought to your attention that um, Sometime after we initiated our foreclosure action on uh, Winter Park Dodge Platner, uh, it came to our attention that the bank that was uh, originally holding the mortgage got bought by another bank that um, um, my law firm represents. We're one of hundreds of banks that uh, of law firms that represent the banks. But uh, I felt like it was necessary for me to bring that to your attention, um, that uh, the possible conflict of interest. Um, I'm asking you, uh, pursuant to the requirements of the Florida Bar, to consider the um, um, approving the, the, the waiver of the conflict that I presented to you. I hope you have had an opportunity to review it. Uh, I, I, I give you my assurances that the firm will continue to zealous, zealously protect your interest in this matter, and hopefully that you'll be comfortable enough to uh, uh, approve the waiver and authorize the mayor to sign. And if indeed that is the action that's taken, I would then request that uh, we schedule a shade meeting for the next <coughs> city council meeting um, after after the next city council meeting immediately following, mm -hmm. where we can uh, uh, consider the, uh, the the settlement offer that's been presented by Mr. Platner that remains on the table. Two, you said lunch. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> um, I do have a question. Yes. Is um, Synovus also being presented the same uh, document? Synovus indicated that uh, that they uh, have no problem with our continued representation. In fact, there's even a question as to whether there is a conflict. I just believe in an abundance of, con uh, of caution okay. to alert you to that fact and to be allowed to c continue to represent uh, okay. you in this matter. Okay. Council members, Lynn? What if we don't say yes to that? Sure. Um, then I would recommend that you um, engage the services of um, the um, person law firm. That they are the firm that um, uh, we, we go to, for example, represents the Code Enforcement Board when we are prosecutors in front of the Code Enforcement Board to avoid conflict uh, and denial of due process. So they are available if that becomes necessary. So what's your preference? I think we should stay the course the I way we're going. I think um, no one knows more. I think that we're better served. Lynn, you've been on code enforcement before. <laughs> what's your thought on this? Uh-oh. I think you all know how I feel about this whole thing. Well, yes, we all feel, have emotions about this. Um, but I, it, I think it, we it, have the, to keep the, the emotions The question out is, the question is, as we can. Aside from how we feel about this particular one, is it do we stay the course with having David represent us, or do we go to the other firm and um, seek firm so there's no? I think we stay the course 
even though we have emotions involved, we have to keep <coughs> the emotions out. David is very familiar with what's been going on from the very beginning. I think he's done a excellent job in guiding us through this process. He's obviously also willing, and if he feels another serious confliction would come, I'm sure that he would uh, quickly let us know. And uh, otherwise, uh, we have to re-educate another welcome. I think we should just go stay our course and uh, uh, have our shade meeting and determine which directions we really need to go as a body mm -hmm. from a business standpoint. Business is business. I think that David's going to be looking for a motion on this one. Yes, thank you. I, mo I move that we stay the course and continue using David Levine as our counsel in this matter. Uh, actually, the appropriate motion would be to um, to agree to um, execute the conflict waiver and authorize. Exactly. Second. That's my motion. Yeah. I second that. So there's been a motion and a second to execute the conflict waiver. Yes. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 And aye with prejudice. Okay. So the motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and it's not that I don't support David. No, I understand, no. And, and I understand, and I it, it, it happens, mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. and it, it happened after the fact. So I, I can, mm -hmm. can't speak for Debbie, but I think all five of us are in agreement on that. On that. Well, level. I agree. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I'm just saying. I, I, I did not. I did not. I did not take it in any negative. Thank you. Did your motion also establish the shade meeting for the next oh, council? Thank you. Oh. Yeah, I also I move, uh, move that. that we establish a shade meeting immediately after the next council meeting. Yeah. Mikhail Finkel, paralegal. For the shade meeting, um, we do have to schedule a court reporter to be here. So rather than have her here, uh, he or she here, and waiting until your earlier meeting ends, could I establish a time, maybe if it's 1 o'clock that afternoon, to, to have that shade meeting? You do have to... Um, part of the requirements is you do have to be in an open session of council, state that you're having a shade meeting, go into that shade meeting, have your meeting, come back and close it. We, can, we don't have to be in this room, we can be there, but it's just easier with a date certain or a time <coughs> certain so I don't have the court reporter just waiting until your normal city council meeting would well, end. Will we be able to get next meeting's business done? Before? Or we could do it before the meeting. Uh, no, let's do it. Let's do it after. And, okay. and, um, what, what time did we set when we had it originally? Uh, we were going to do it at, be, one, based on that agenda. week's agenda, we had asked them to be here at 1 o'clock. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I'm, I would defer to Howard and say, what, what do you... What time? What What's time? the agenda look like? Well, it's not July 3rd type agenda, so second meeting in June, we really... We're not... At the, at, right now, we don't foresee many items. Okay. So, so let's go for 1 o'clock. Oh, one is fine. I'm thinking, are yeah, thinking we'll, just, we'll just... Are you thinking noon? Well, if you do it at 1 o'clock, then you do have an opportunity for a snack between the... Yeah, <laughs> if you feed us, we'll wait till 1 o'clock. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> 1 o'clock. Okay. Add that Gee. to my motion. Second. So there's been a motion and a second to convene the shade meeting at 1 o'clock on June, June the 19th. Thank you. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Thank you very much. Okay. So now we go into, is that it? That's it. Okay. Uh, City Clerk and... Yes, for the Florida League of Cities voting delegate, as you know, the um, annual business meeting of the League of Cities is held at the annual conference. And the league is asking that the city designate one official to serve as the voting delegate. So uh, I know at least four of you will be attending. Um, in the past, it, it typically has been the mayor, but that is your prerogative. So I need you to decide who will be your voting delegate. I think it stay the mayor. I agree. Okay. <laughs> mayor and vice mayor, would you be the alternate? I'd be delighted. Okay, great, very good. Thank, thank you. Um, yes, I'm. I'm delighted to to do it. Um, we weren't sure from just being okay. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, boards and committees. 
Okay, under boards and committees, the vacancies include police officers pension board, two three-year terms on the planning commission, as well as a utility advisory board and a resident commissioner seat on the Punta Gorda Housing Authority. Um, I will say that for the police officers pension board, this is a continuing vacancy, but um, we went back, we had um, some applicants who applied for the fifth member seat that's appointed by the board members themselves, and mm -hmm. several of those folks have indicated interest, so we're gonna have five uh, possible nominees at the next meeting, so that'll okay, be good. 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 And um, we're asking um, the housing authority to help us identify someone for the resident commissioner seat. So hopefully that won't be open for too long. Okay. Okay. And under nominations, we have a three-year term as an alternate on the planning commission. We have two eligible applicants for nomination. Quick question before we do anything about that. Is, don't they have to be a full-time resident? To That's be. correct. That's why we're asking the housing authority to help us identify someone. No, no, I mean, I mean for the nomination. For planning, planning, planning commission. commission. Do they have to be a full-time resident? Um, they need to be a resident of the city. But they don't um, have and to. And they have to be able, to, they have to be available to attend meetings. Having served with one of the nominees, I just question whether they're here year round, because that was a problem on another committee. Okay. So I don't. Okay. You're not required to nominate them. Yeah. So um, it's. Is that something we can clarify before it's voted on? Mm -hmm. I think we should do that. Um, I, I would recommend we nominate both and then <coughs> clarify whether both applicants will be here year round so that they don't miss that many meetings. Okay. Because I know that they're in one particular situation there, there there's a, a, a person that <coughs> has missed a number of meetings on another committee. Okay, we'll do that. So you're gonna go ahead and nominate them? Yeah, nominate okay. both. Okay, very good, thank you. Okay, lastly, we have vacancies to make appointments. Your um, voting forms are coming around. This is for the Historic Preservation Advisory Board. <coughs> Uh, you have two eligible applicants to choose from. There is an extra ballot, which I'm going to... I'm from Chicago. <laughs> <laughs> you just don't trust me. Good thing that Gary's not sitting over here. He might have taken both ballots. <laughs> no, watch it. will be a tie. Yes. <laughs> yeah. We have four votes, and they're voted, and um, Ms. Colbert is the appointee. Okay. Thank you. Congratulations to Ms. Colbert. Um, so under policy and legislation, um, on Tuesday the 18th, it'll be a busy afternoon, um, the Florida League of Cities is starting an advocacy, Southwest Florida League of Cities is starting an advocacy group, so I'm going to be participating in that group. Um, and we'll be meeting that afternoon, as well as then at five o'clock is the presentation uh, that uh, Mitchell will be making uh, at the event center. That will be um, some of the uh, preliminary feedback from Dover Cole. So I know a lot of people have been asking about that and are looking forward to seeing, and have been asking me actually, what is it that they're gonna be presenting? And I said, I don't know. I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing, so. You haven't seen it yet. Yeah. Um, and then also I'm inviting everyone to the ribbon cutting for the Pickleplex uh, at, on June 24th at 5.30 at the Pickleplex at Florida Southwestern State College. If you have not been out there, the courts are looking gorgeous and um, getting play. 
there were, um, I think, uh, two or three more courts going to be open today. Um, and uh, they are the, the company that's doing the painting of the courts and then striping um, have been um, busy. And so we said, take, take some time. We have taken two and a half years to get this far. A couple days is not going to make a difference. So, um, and then I think in a few days there'll be some more courts and eventually um, by the time the, the ribbon cutting will happen, all 16 courts will be definitely open. So I um, invite everyone to come and uh, there'll be invitations coming out. Um, but I just want to share that with you now. So, um, so with that, uh, council member comments? I just want to wish Debbie well. I know she was soldiering and tough through this morning. She tried to make it and didn't. Uh, she really w is not well, and uh, I hope that she's speedy recovery. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, she was a trooper. She hung in a <laughs> lot longer than I thought she was going to. <laughs> no, I have nothing. I, I wrote, I wrote yeah. her a note saying that you needed a hot toddy and a warm bed and breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't drink. <laughs> oh boy, that's a problem. <laughs> <laughs> Never trust anybody that doesn't drink. <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding. <laughs> Not everybody takes it so seriously in this town. I'm sure the pot will. This is great. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing else. Uh -huh. Just wishing Debbie well. That's all. Yeah. yeah. All right. Great. So now we'll go to um, citizens' comments. So you have three minutes. Come to the podium, and you can speak on right. any, any topic. <clears throat> Hi. Sheila Yeager. Um, Good I'm afternoon. Historic District. And um, first, thank you again for this opportunity. Thanks for all of you for hanging in there. Um, and I want to add today, I, I know this is tedious for you. Believe me, um, I know. And I can only assure you emphatically that it cannot be nearly as tedious for you as it is as that which motivates me to come up here time and again to address you. It, it's just not. Um, in the veterinary profession, we have a saying, first, do no harm. Pickleball and Gilchrist Park does harm. Between the evidence from NIH and uh, WHO and acoustical evidence and our personal accounts, and we've given you a, a lot of evidence supporting that. We would have stopped bothering you a long time ago if we didn't find the noise harmful. I mean, it just you, you don't put this kind of energy into protesting something that you don't, isn't really bothering you. Um, the harm done to the park's appearance by the fencing is self-evident. Eight courts or four courts or one court, the harm is in degrees, but it is still harmful and the fencing is, is proving ineffectual so far. And to the eye of one recent observer who gave me this new word instead of obnoxious, oh, hideous, <laughs> hideous, that's what she called it. Um, as we have reported repeatedly, as Dr. Thornton wrote, as the offensive noise is generated by a paddle strike, even a single game of pickleball generates disruptive noise. People choosing to ignore this evidence, like the players, because they don't want to spoil their own fun, are choosing to continue to do harm. I suppose they could uh, say asking them to stop playing in the park is harmful to them, but there again, it's a matter of degrees. We are fighting for our homes. Um, the surveys Victor Dover did during the charrette kickoff presentations were consistent between his morning and his evening crowds. In both sessions, a large majority of the participating citizens considered quality of place as the city's top strength. That means almost 60% see our public spaces and historic character as most important in defining Punta Gorda. Active recreation, including biking, golf, and pickleball, et cetera, came in a distant fourth at 4% 4 4 of those responding. Another insight for Victor, from Victor Do Dover was his assertion that access to green spaces, it says yellow. Yeah, yeah you still have okay. some time. Are essential to people's well-being. A park isn't an airport or train tracks or a gun range. It's supposed to be pleasant. And when one buys a home near a park, one actually pays a premium because of that. Pickleball in Gilcross Park doesn't add to the city's quality of place. It negatively impacts the, impacts the park and the neighborhood. It attracts, it hurts. Nor does it need to be in the park to ensure the player's enjoyment. We have our lovel lovely Pickleplex, which is now open and I'm sure is beautiful. I've seen it. It is lovely. Thank you. Thank you. 
Yes, I'm looking forward to the information so we can really make a, um, a sound decision and not an emotional one when we do. So thank you. Um, any other comments? Okay. Uh, first, let me, uh, if I may, uh, please, yeah, please, please come to the podium and, and state your name. Uh, David Klingerman. Thank uh, you. I would like to ask Mr. Kunick if he could uh, provide the condominiums that he's talked to or going to have the public meetings with. I would like extra uh, time. Mikhail Finkel is right here. She can tell you exactly who they are. <coughs> Good afternoon, uh, Mikhail Finkel. Um, public hearings, there will be, so the public hearings are required for any property owner whose assessment is being raised over the maximum that uh, we had already noticed them for. So um, there is water garden condominiums. There will be, be two property owners receiving public hearing notices. Um, Lime Terrace and Admiral's Point will have um, some of their, one is an entire uh, condo association and the other, uh, again, I believe is one unit owner who uh, was, is being assessed for two slips that they are assigned. The fourth one that um, Howard mentioned, um, that one is actually a, a reduction in the water access unit by one calculation. Uh, we've determined that one of the slips is not occupiable by a vessel, therefore uh, we're reducing that. That does not require a public <coughs> hearing. Um, those folks will simply get a prepayment notice for their lower assessment and I believe there at, there's eight of them that have paid. They will be getting, uh, we will be refunding the difference from what they prepaid. Okay, thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Again, my name is David Klingerman. I'm a condominium owner who does not own a boat slip in the Kipper Cove Village, 2002 Bell Harbor Boulevard. <coughs> uh, I am being assessed, but but um, do not receive a benefit from the Buckley Pass project based on portions of an email dated April 26th from the city manager's office state that some proof is needed that uh, the W, and I quote, the WAUs will be assigned to a limited group of condo unit owners. Then the city can reapportion the water access unit assignments and adjust the assessment pursuant to section 718.120 for statutes. Then the city can make adjustments even after the tax bills go out, subject to due process. That's the end of that quote. It took uh, about three and a half weeks in, this, in the month of May to get response from the city on some of my emails. But since the publicly, publicly passed pro public hearing of April 3rd, 2019, it is my understanding that the city council wanted to give condominium or condominium owners the opportunity to provide documentation to determine which condominium owners should or should not receive benefit from this, would or would not receive benefit from this project. I have submitted many pertinent documents by presentations and emails to city staff who should have reviewed and should have on file and available for review. <coughs> I've also sent an email to the city council members to inform you of the documents I have presented. So the term limited common elements must be understood based on the common condominium declarations in Florida condominium laws. And based on Florida law, Florida statute 718.10319, limited common elements means those common elements which are reserved for the use of a certain unit or units to the exclusion of all other units as specified in the declaration. Also, our building Condominium Building 46 Sub-Associated sub Declarations, Section 8, Limited Common Elements, reads, uh, Limited Common Elements, description <coughs> of Limited Common Elements are certain common elements that have reserved, that have been reserved for the use of a particular unit or units to the exclusion of other units. Limited Common Elements and units to which their exclusive use is a pertinent. You have to keep going. Okay, uh, what I want to get to in exclusive use, the exclusive use of limited common element is an appurtenance to the unit or units to which it is designated or assigned. The right of exclusive use of the limited common element passes with the unit to that which is assigned. Uh, I do have a uh, Florida Attorney General, Bill McCollum, advisory uh, legal opinion. 
AGO 2009-34. That is your three minutes. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other comments? All right, seeing not a rush for that, we'll just adjourn the meeting. Thank you for being here.